Hi, uh, I'm Lidl, uh, part of IPFS Stewards Group, working for Protocol Labs for a while. And this is kind of like a lightning talk I wanted to give. Um, um, one, to revive a library which we had, uh, we've been using internally for a long, long time, and also like show, uh, it, it makes a very nice small example how to do data structures beyond just files, IPFS, FS, file system, sure, but you can do more now. Uh, we are investing more in uh, simpler formats uh, rep for representing arbitrary data structures, namely DAX, CBOR. Uh, if you need anything uh, beyond files and directories, it's way simpler to do DAX, CBOR, because it's regular CBOR. Um, and the talk will be about uh, IPFS GOIP, a decentralized search index uh, built uh, with DAX, CBOR. Um, so it's kind of like a case study. Um, uh, so first, what uh, is uh, IPFS GOIP? It's a library we use in multiple places, IPFS desktop, web UI, uh, gateway checker even. Um, so if you install IPFS desktop and go to peer screen, you will see a map. And at the bottom, you'll see a list of peers. Uh, on the connection column, you will see the connection type, if it's like IPv4, and that means we have a uh, IP uh, address of that peer, and we use IPFS GOIP to do a lookup which city, which country that uh, IP belongs to. Uh, IPs are migrated and sold. It's like a scarce uh, uh, resource now, so you need to update the database periodically. If you see connections being faster than light between Europe and US, it means we are not that fast, it's just like uh, the data set is out of date. Uh, so the library is very simple, it's a single function lookup, you pass IPFS uh, provider and the IP that you want to look up and you get uh, an object which tells you, oh, which country, city uh, and uh, coordinates on the map uh, for that IP. And it's an ESM module, uh, so you could have a very simple HTML page. Uh, you could use a gateway, uh, public gateway now, thanks to uh, trustless verifiable uh, responses, namely the block one. You can pass the gateway address. Uh, you don't to run JSIPFS in the browser and it will look up correctly. Um, so how does it work beyond that function? Um, so, the JOIP uh, dataset we use is from Geolite. Uh, it's publicly available. Um, the problem is it's in a, a comma separated uh, value format. So, what we do, we read all the data. It's, format is simple. You have a network uh, definition. So, it's like a range of IPs and the location for that range. So, it could be a single IP, it could be entire network. Uh, so, we convert this format to a uh, B3, uh, and we represent that uh, as an IPFS DAG. And maybe, like, I don't want to go too deep, but uh, if you represent the data set as a DAG, at the very top you got uh, as a DAG of ranges of IPs. Like, IP, can, it's just a number. It's sure it's like four octets, but you could uh, convert it to a, a single number, and then you have uh, just a range of numbers. Then you cut that uh, range into small buckets. You build a tree based on that. Uh, so you have a root, and that root points at uh, some children buckets, and those buckets are identified by uh, like the, uh, the cutoff uh, number, so the, like the ranges of IPs. If my, the IP you are looking uh, for is in that range, you follow that branch of the tree. And if you like, go once, twice, deep enough, you will end up on a final leaf node which has the information. For this IP or this range, if it's a bigger network, uh, uh, yes, a network mask, you will get this information. Um, and this is currently in Dax Cibor, but it was not like that before. Um, uh, but general uh, idea of, of applies even to the older version. And it's it's the, the cool, it, representing data set like the JOIP this way is very useful because it's something you can write by hand. You don't need dedicated library, especially if you have uh, knowledge about uh, how, what is the most optimal way to represent your data, um, 
how big average networks are, there's a room for optimization. But even if you do a very na naive implementation like this one, um, you get a nice properties. So not all IP ranges, not all IP networks are utilized equally. They're like hotspots in the data set. So the entire data set, it's like 400 megabytes or 200. Uh, your clients don't need to have an entire data set. Probably people uh, who are running in a Comcast network, they will hit only a few uh, network ranges for different locations. So it, the nice property is that if you have this uh, representation, your data set uh, kind of like auto scales to provide more replicas for the most popular parts of the data set. You get uh, another nice property for this specific use case is that when uh, IPs get sold and we have a new version of the data set, we regenerate it, but like most of IPs do not move. Most of ranges will be the same. Only a few parts change. So we, we have like data deduplication across data sets. So cli clients like IPFS desktop has a new version. Uh, it still leverages the, all the blocks that are cached from the old version. Those are like immutable IPFS blocks identified by CAD. So you, they are like highly cacheable, especially if you fetch them from a public gateway. You leverage uh, the HTTP, CDNs, uh, cache control, and all that jazz. Um, so I mentioned it's about Doug Sibor and um, what prompted this uh, lightning talk was uh, the fact that this library is very useful. We had it for a long, long time. It shows how you build a uh, decentralized uh, search index for something very simple. Uh, but it was using um, uh, the old data format. So it was created in a time when in the IPFS we did not have CADV1. Everything was multi-hash. That meant every block had to be parsed the same way. And that meant every block was DAGPB. So the DAGPB is a format we use for representing files and uh, directories right now. It has uh, data and links fields. Uh, but for this specific use case, when we don't have files and directories, but we want to store uh, arbitrary data structure, B3 like search index, we abuse that format, sort of, uh, by storing JSON in a data field of a node, which kind of was also a directory. Um, and that was fine. It, wor it still works today if you use a like, other version of the library. Uh, but uh, it did not work out of the box with a bunch of uh, modern tooling, which after CIDV1 assumes that DAGPB is for files and directories, and for everything else, you got a better formats like DAGSIBOR. So um, the main problem, it requires special reader. The JIP library had additional, additional complexity because you had to have also like protobuf parser. Um, so it, over time, it become anti-pattern. We deprecated object API because it's only about DAGPB. And we now have, like, uh, we have uh, DAG Cibor and we have new DAG um, API in Kubo, specifically for uh, adding the data structures which are uh, converted to DAG Cibor uh, natively. So overall, even if it's fine, and even if you don't feel it's anti-pattern, there's a performance hit, you put JSON or Cibor inside of protobuf, you always have this overhead. Let's use uh, uh, Cibor uh, directly. So the new format, it's kind of like feature-proof. There's no uh, additional protobuf uh, wrapper. It's every DAC uh, Cibor uh, object is also a valid Cibor following the RFC from IETF. We have a registered Cibor tag 42, which means uh, it's future-proof because any software that will be created in decades follow, uh, they will know the Cibor tag 42 means CID link. Uh, and that gives you uh, uh, one, uh, decreases the complexity of your stack, and another gives you this like, future prof, uh, property. Uh, and it also collapses the complexity to the point when you don't need to run IPFS node to utilize this data set. Um, and I will show that uh, later after I think uh, there's a screenshot of a public gate checker, unless I forgot to make that slide. But um, we don't have JS IPFS node there. We don't use uh, a Kubo RPC there. We just fetch a raw block from a public gateway, just blob, and we parse that in JavaScript running on a page using a very small library, which parses the CBOR and traverses the links. So um, variable retrieval enabled 
like collapses the complete city uh, by a lot, and this is like a very nice small demonstration of that. And you get the size reduction uh, for free, mostly because we you change JSON to Seaboard, that's around 22% usually, but the remainder is, you know, we remove the unnecessary fields, we, you also, we also remove the uh, protobuf wrapper, so overall the data set of entire JYP database for the resolution of cities was around 400 megabytes, and after the rewrite it's 270, but that's not nowhere close what your client will do only a few bytes will be fetched for specific IPs that you have. And usually like on the peer screen, it's usually most of the peers are stable enough uh, or are from similar networks. Uh, so you won't be, uh, it's, it's good enough to use on mobile. Uh, you won't be like draining a bunch of uh, data of your users and blocks can be cached locally. Um, Yep, so the library uh, is, uh, the rewritten library code is on GitHub. Uh, it's not even like optimized. We could cut down a resolution times by optimizing stuff around how IP networks are uh, shaped today. Uh, but it's a, a nice demonstration how to build simple stuff with just Daxibor uh, and have a decentralized auto scaling search index for free. Daxibor spec is on IPLD website and you can install IPFS desktop or go to public gateway checker. Uh, which I forgot to include uh, as a screenshot to see uh, flags uh, of public gateways. And those are also resolved. Uh, we use uh, DNS over HTTPS to get IP of a domain name, and then we do the lookup over IPFS go IP, JYP. So uh, that's how a public gateway checker works, because there's no DNS lookup API in the browser. Uh, that's it. Thanks.